Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Before we get started, if you enjoyed the videos, leave a like, and if you haven't, subscribe. It helps out a lot and I really appreciate it. The movie we're talking about today is Blood Red Sky. The film was released on July 23rd, 2021 in Germany, and it's a Netflix original directed by Peter Thorworth. The actors put on some great performances and features Dominic Purcell, who played Dracula in Blade Trinity, and Graham McTavish, who voices Dracula in the Netflix Castlevania series. I thought it was kind of cool that two people in this vampire movie have played Dracula in other movies. Thanks to everyone that suggested to cover this movie. There was a lot of you. The movie's about a woman named Nadia trying to get to America with her son Ilias, so she can receive treatment for an illness. The movie has been praised for its unique take on a vampire story, and I have to say I really enjoyed it. Aside from the added tension of being trapped inside an airplane with ravenous vampires, there's a great emotional side to the story between Nadia and her son. When we first meet Nadia, she is standing in the mirror and she is bald. She puts on a wig and then we see her video chatting with a doctor. The doctor is giving her a tour of their facility, showing her their radiation therapy area and the room where she'll be staying. But she is interrupted by a call from her son who is waiting for her at the airport. We know that she has some kind of condition that at the moment seems like leukemia. She is traveling to New York to receive treatment at a special facility. Her son arrives at the airport alone to check in their luggage and Nadia arrives a little while later at sundown. While going through bag check, we see she has multiple medications and injections. She tells her son she will be right back and goes into the bathroom to take her medication. Nadia takes out a needle and fills it, then opens up a small bottle and drinks it. When she pulls the bottle away, we can see there's some red on her lips. Blood. After drinking the blood, she seems to be in a euphoric state and has to snap herself out of it. She quickly grabs the needle and injects herself, which causes a lot of pain. The blood is probably just enough to keep her alive as she seems very weak, and the injection must keep the vampirism from progressing further. While Nadia is in the bathroom, her son starts up a conversation with a scientist named Farid. He asks if his mother is around, but Ilya says she's taking her medicine. But there's a doctor in America, Dr. Brown, who can help her. He can kill off her bad blood and implant new bone marrow, so she'll start making new, healthy blood. So this Dr. Brown, not that one, is going to try to replace her bone marrow and blood to try and get rid of the vampirism virus. Does this doctor think she has some other illness or does he in fact know what she's suffering from? After all, the medication she was taking to help her symptoms, she said was prescribed to her. So the doctor must have gave her a prescription for these medications in order for her to bring them on the plane. So maybe Nadia isn't the first person Dr. Brown has treated with this condition. She carries a small book with her and later we find out she has been writing down the exact times of sunrise and sunsets, as well as things like blood, 150 milliliters, probably figuring out what dosage works the best. Through various flashbacks, we learn that she was traveling with her husband, Nikolai, and their baby, and their car broke down while driving at night. Nikolai doesn't know what's wrong with the car, so he says he will go get help and tells her to wait. They wait there for a long time, but it begins to get too cold for the baby, so she decides to follow Nikolai's footsteps and try to find him. She starts following his tracks down the road and they lead down a snowy driveway. While shouting his name, walking toward the dark house, she can hear strange noises all around her. She enters the house and finds blood in the snow and it looks like Nikolai was dragged into the basement. She starts walking down the stairs and the creature appears behind her, forcing her to run down the stairs and lock the door behind her. In the room, she finds her husband dead and the creature starts smashing on the door but can't break through and the sounds stop. A moment later, the creature is behind her ripping the boards off the basement window. She runs to the window and tries to push the creature back, but lucky for her, the sun comes up and the creature begins to shriek in pain and runs away. But while she was trying to push the creature away, it bit her hand in a struggle, and that's how she became infected. When she was trying to understand what was wrong with her, she returned to the place where she was bitten and finds the basement had a makeshift lab with research and some science equipment. A man enters the basement and tells her that she killed his son, and that he only bit her because he couldn't control himself. Nadia replies, but you can. The old man tells her nobody can. The evil is too strong, and he tries to shoot her. He continues, we are all cursed. We must stop this evil from spreading. And he tries to set fire to the house while they're in the basement, but Nadia manages to stop him. Because the man said we are cursed, that implies that he was also a vampire, but he looks very human, so he must have found a way to treat it or slow it down. It's unknown how him and his son became infected, but he was definitely trying to find a cure or a treatment for vampirism. Nadia finds a fridge in the basement with a bunch of small glass vials and she takes all of them. And then she sets fire to the house. 
The medicine she found in the man's basement is how she has been able to manage her condition through the years. Turns out this mysterious medicine keeps the vampiric features from manifesting. The medication could also be the reason that Nadia lost her hair, which leads some people to believe that this was some kind of chemotherapy medicine. The only thing I don't quite understand is if he knew how to treat vampirism, why was his son so far gone when he attacked Nadia and her husband? Unless his son was already more prone to violence like 8-Ball, and when he became a vampire he was just too hard to control. The basement of the house had an extremely strong metal door, and the windows were boarded up, so it's possible the son spent the daylight hours locked in this basement, or the father had to lock himself in to be safe. It could be nothing, but I've never seen a regular basement with a big metal door. The old man told Nadia that this evil can't spread anymore, and although she killed him, she knows he is right. The only reason vampirism spread through the plane was because the character 8-Ball injected himself with Nadia's blood in a last ditch attempt to save his own life. When she fed on a hijacker, she made sure to go back and make sure he was dead so that he wouldn't come back as a vampire. And when one of the hijackers gets away from 8-Ball, Nadia doesn't attack him, but grabs him and checks him for bites, because if he was bit, she would have had to kill him. But because he was unharmed, she lets him go free. At the time Nadia became infected and sought out the house, Ilias was only a baby, and now he is much older, so she has been living with vampirism for a long time. In some flashbacks, we see some of the trouble she went through trying to hide her condition, like pulling out her fangs. And you can see what looks to be new sharp teeth coming in over her other teeth. We see she eventually wears fake teeth to cover the gaps where she pulled out her fangs. But when she feeds on a large amount of blood, instead of just a sip from a bottle, her fangs grow back very quickly. So drinking only small amounts of blood and using the medicine is a way to slow down the transformation. She is now traveling to New York to meet with Dr. Brown as it's her only hope to be cured. Unfortunately, their flight gets hijacked by a group that wants to fly the plane into London, and Nadia is forced to reveal her dark secret in order to save her son's life. The vampires of Blood Red Sky are monstrous looking creatures, similar to 30 Days of Night in my opinion. It's not clear if these vampires are immortal because we don't see any old enough to prove that claim, but we can probably assume that they would live longer than a regular human. They have improved senses, like hearing and seeing in the dark, and they can even move their bat-like ears in order to hear even better. They have two large fangs, but their other teeth also become sharp, and their nails become longer and function like claws. The more blood a vampire feeds on, their transformation seems to become more pronounced, changing the structure of their face shape and eye color. Nadia is more pale and loses her hair, but this must be a cause of her treatment and medication because none of the other vampires lose their hair after turning. Once a vampire is turned, they become violent and have a thirst for blood right away. They also start having more animalistic movements and have the ability to run on all fours. Nadia is the only vampire able to show any self-control other than the old man that she met in the basement. This probably because she has been a vampire much longer and has learned how to control herself so that she won't attack her son as well as she's been taking the medication to slow her transformation, allowing her to manage her blood cravings. But even as Nadia consumes blood, she has a harder and harder time trying to remain herself. These vampires have fast healing abilities. Nadia is shot in the chest by one of the hijackers and seems to be dead, but a while later she coughs up some blood and is conscious again. When Nadia is shot, but hasn't consumed any blood, her healing abilities are considerably slower, but once she feeds, the bullet wound heals in a matter of seconds. So vampires must feed on a regular basis for their healing abilities to work at full capacity. Newly turned vampires do not seem to have any significant increase in strength or speed because they are never seen performing any supernatural feats. But once a vampire has consumed enough blood and their transformation is complete, they do have increased strength and speed. The vampire in the basement was able to leave giant dents in the metal door, and 8-Ball was able to push a car away from the wall. Nadia is also able to run on all fours at what looks to be a considerable speed. So once Vampire's full transformation is complete, they gain a moderate amount of strength and speed, but if they continue to feed on blood, they could become even stronger. The only true weakness these vampires have is sunlight. It burns their skin, and if exposed long enough, will kill them. Nadia also wears sunglasses everywhere, so it's possible their eyes become more sensitive to light. As when the hijackers turn the lights on abruptly, she winces and covers her eyes. These vampires are not shown being weak to crosses, holy water, or garlic, but the old man does say it's evil. So although this form of vampirism acts like a blood disease and seems to have a biological origin, the old man says it's evil, so it could have some kind of supernatural origin that we don't know about. Who knows how long the old man and his son were living in the woods, or how long he's been researching vampirism and what he could have found. 
To become a vampire, you must be bitten or inject yourself with the infected blood. You could probably also ingest the blood. If someone receives a bite on their leg or arm, the limb can be removed to stop the spread, similar to a zombie infection. When Nadia is bit, she only received a small wound, which could have been why she didn't change as drastically right away. Compared to when a man on the plane gets bit and he starts turning right away, shaking and convulsing, and the veins around his bite are black. When 8-Ball injects himself with Nadia's blood, his transformation looks even faster, very violent, causing him to shake and convulse. You must be alive to be turned into a vampire, so you couldn't bite a dead body and bring them back as a vampire, which is why Nadia's husband Nikolai never came back. That means that these vampires are not dead, or undead. They're living creatures with a heartbeat. Well, that's the Vampires of Blood Red Sky, one of the most refreshing vampire stories I've seen in recent years, alongside Midnight Mass. The movie gives you some action, with a string of mystery that leads you to the end. If you haven't seen this movie, and you enjoy vampires, you definitely need to check it out. I'm currently working on a video about the vampires, or Strigoi from the TV series The Strain. But like usual, if you guys have any other suggestions for a movie or TV show you'd like me to cover, please leave it in the comments below. I love reading through them and seeing what you guys recommend. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you haven't. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.